Hey everyone. So today is part two of our vintage map exploration from the community book box. And I suggested that we could have a look at some of the city maps today, specifically Munich. We can see this is from the um, Olympic Games, Olympia Plan. Then we have Bucharest, interestingly in German. And we have Budapest, only in Hungarian. So let's see how much I understand. Let's start off with Munich and for that I think we could have a look at how far it is to get to Munich from here. So here would be Wien and you would have to follow roughly this route here past Umstetten and along the Danube, Linz, Wales, Gmunden. Um, Salzburg and then along here up to Munich. So okay. Right, we have the black dot here, Wien. And to Munich it's 416 kilometers. I feel like for an Austrian that's uh, far away. But if you come from a bigger country, that's probably quite close. All a matter of perspective. Okay, so this one is from the 70s, the Olympic Games in Munich. We're in 504. We can go for a test drive. This one is for a bookstore where you can buy books and maps. It's in the town hall exactly below the giants. This one is for glasses and contact lenses. This has glasses to where you want them and they're not expensive but still from an expert. We have books, art and LPs. We have a hotel here. Gepflegtes Haus, ruhige Zimmer, mittlere Preisklasse. So quiet rooms, not too expensive. This one is La Bonne Auberge, Restaurant Francais. In the center of Munich, Speciality Fruit de Mer. I'm not sure about a landlocked city like Munich if you really want to have freedom out there. And I think the most important 
important one. Where was it? Right here. Rent a BMW. I think that's the one that really makes you realize that you're in Munich. that stick out. The first one here is the river that structures the entire city. This is the Isa. So the front's northeast here. We can see that further south we have a couple of arms. One, two, a small one here, three, down to two again. There's something off to the side here. And we also see that we have a number of bridges where we get closer to the center. And we have some islands in the river. Here's one. The Congress Hall and the German Museum. And this one is the Prater Insel. This one has a, a museum of the Alps or of the mountains. And I think the other part that structures this map similar to the river would be over here. These are the rail lines coming into the city towards the main train station here on the western side of the inner city and then moving out and north or further east and of course we also have some going south and crossing the river going east The historic city center would be right here. A lot of it had to be rebuilt, but you still get a good idea of sort of the historic elements of the city. You can also see a familiar queue here, so there's an underground line. There's another one here. There's an S over here. The part that I think is really interesting here with this map, because it was very new, is right here. And we can see that it has been highlighted with this blue border. This is the Olympic Village. So it follows the street along here in the north, cuts 
Zuckers Tee Riesenfeld. So. And then sort of loosely follows the schwere Reiterstraße here. And this would be Dachauer Straße. And the way north is Mittlerer Ring. So the middle ring. Okay. What do we have here? This would be a Motorrad Sandrennbahn. It's a racetrack with sand for motorcycles. Reitstadion would be here for equestrian sports. Radstadion, so this would be a velodrome. This here is probably familiar if you're interested in football. This is the Olympiastadion where for a long time the FC Bayern Munich used to play. I don't watch a lot of football, but I do know the name. Here we have a Schwimmhalle. So for swimming competitions. There's an Eishalle. It's an ice rink. This is sort of a generic Sporthalle, so just sports arena. And this says Olympiaturm in very small letters. So some kind of tower, but I'm not sure what that would have been for. At the center, we have an Olympic lake. With a Freilich Theater. So an open air theater here at the center. If we go north across the street here, we get to the Olympic Village. Here in the north is the one for the male athletes, and in the uh, south, the one for the female athletes. And generally it says here Olympic Village Center. There's a hall for volleyball. Here's the TV center. And this is just for training. We also have an underground station right here next to it. So it's accessible with public transport. And we have another Espanhof over here. It's one of the city rail lines. It leads up to the Olympic Village. It's always interesting to find out what happens to these areas once the Olympic Games are over. And this is still used. Um, you find all kinds of football games there, but also concerts and other kinds of events. I really like the way this map sounds. Alright. So there was a short look at Munich. At the center. It's river. And I think it was worth noting the many gardens and parks that come with it. So it looks like a very, very green city. 
in the Olympic village that was built right here. Okay, let's continue our exploration with the next city. So the little guide here doesn't really help us with Bucharest, but it does give us a number for Budapest in Hungary, which is where we're gonna go next. So let's pick Vienna again. There we go. We have the black dot right at the center. And to Budapest, it's not far at all. It's only 250 kilometers. So that's quite close. So we already said last time we have this really beautiful large mouth with I think a really gorgeous design here in the center. We have the river which is a Danube with a bridge and then a couple of monuments, different architecture styles. And it says here map, carte, plan, carte. It is print spelling multilingual. So if we look here, we can see that it um, starts off in Hungarian, then there has, uh, then there's English tram and trolley bus lines, then French service du tramway trolleybus, and German Straßenbahn und Buslinien. And then this presumably is Russian, which I'm not going to try to pronounce because I haven't practiced Russian in a long time. So what we have here is um, an index of all of the different streets. It explains to you how to use it. The Roman figures following the name indicates the district. All the letters and figures show the exact place on the map of the streets. Uh, of the streets, squares, etc. that you're looking for. So you can really use this one to look up an address. Um, it doesn't really have a lot of tourist information. No, in fact, at least no on the back. And also not on the front. Okay, so this was probably really used to find your way, maybe by car, if you were traveling through. And I think it's a really nice, colorful illustration. It's rare to see a map that's designed like this. Again, here through the center, we have the river. All the way through. It says Duna, which is the Danube. And we have a number of islands in the Danube. 
so we have a these aren't quite islands but you can see that there's sort of a bit of a port that you can use and we have illustrations of different ships with their roots and I'm not sure if this would indicate a fairy I kind of doubt it but who knows? I have been to Hungary and specifically to Budapest a couple of times mm, but mostly when I was younger and I don't remember too much of the city except that I enjoyed staying there I can't remember seeing a fairy and a Danube blue. Right, and then here we have a type of canal that leads off to the side. And this looks very much like a harbour. can also see it in the names here it says petroleum for example so I guess it translates to petrol and again two ships connecting the two sides of the Danube the different colors are used to indicate the district So we have smaller districts here This would be five On the other side of the Danube we have one in orange This would be one You can see that it continues clockwise upwards in pink shade, we have the second district with a great number of green areas towards the outskirts here in yellow we have the third district and here it says Obuda the interesting thing about Budapest is that the city hasn't had this name for that long, um, roughly 150 years and before that it consisted of three different cities which were Buda, Obuda and Pest or Pest and when they were unified the names were also sort of smushed together and now you have Budapest but Obuda would be one of the historical uh, parts of the city or of the cities in plural Right, we jump across the Danube again to this orange area the fourth district We've already seen the fifth one So if we jump a little further south and then continue this journey here with the sixth, the seventh in light blue, the eighth, we're back to orange, and we can see again some green areas. some interesting patterns throughout here would be the ninth district and let's see if we can find the tenth oh, right here so again light blue number 10 and for 11, we jump across the Danube again 
And then here we have 12. And I was wondering if I would also be able to find one of the underground stations. It looks like we have one here. Very small. I don't know if you can make this out. There's an M here. I think I've mentioned this before. The interesting thing about the underground in Budapest is that this was originally uh, suggested for Vienna but Vienna declined so the architects went 250 kilometers further east suggested it again and it was built here in Hungary so it's quite an old underground system one of the oldest in fact from 1896 I can't see any of the other stations. It's really been a while since my last visit. I guess I should make use of the train connections again. In spring. It really isn't very fun. So I know there are four lines in total, but clearly this map wasn't designed for getting around Hungary on foot or by public transport, but rather for someone who would um, use the streets and would need the different names of the streets and be able to identify them quickly. Again, I think this is a really beautiful map. I really love the way this is designed with the colors. There's a little bit of damage here where it's been folded. Right here. But of course, this map too is about quarter century old. So. It only makes sense that it shows. Let's fold this back up. said we can use this one to find a way to Bucharest unfortunately but it does suggest Prague, Belgrade, Zagreb, Trieste, Milano. So let's put these together and add them to the side. And the last city we want to have a look at is Bucharest in Romania. So it's almost like we're following the Danube. And while Bucharest itself is not by the Danube, it's not too far off either. It's only about uh, 60 kilometers. And in fact, a Bucharest Danube canal has not just been suggested, but they also started building it. However, it's never been finished. So, who knows, maybe one day. But again, it's not far away from the Danube. 
egg from the Danube Delta. Okay, before we take a look at this map, let's quickly turn it around. And let's see what kind of information we got here. So I already mentioned this last time, this is entirely in German, which I find really interesting. And um, one of you commented on the last video that it might have been um, written for tourists from Eastern Germany, which would make sense. I think Romania was a very popular tourist destination in the Soviet Union. As it was in the south, it was by the sea. So, just like people here would have gone to Italy or Greece or Yugoslavia, uh, from Eastern Germany, you could go to Romania. And I tried to find some more information, it was a bit difficult. But a couple of years ago, there was an exhibition about the uh, postcards that people sent back to Germany which was kind of really cute, so all of these really excited little messages about how beautiful it was during their trip. Not necessarily to Bucharest, but towards the sea. So it says here, Bucharest, the capital of the um, Soviet Republic, Romania, is an important political, socio-economical and cultural center of the country. It's also called Garden City because of its many parks and green areas. There's also a chain of lakes in the north and east, which makes the city particularly charming. It has um, touristic importance because of its um, harmonic connection of different kinds of architectural styles from different um, times of its history. It doesn't say that here, but in fact there's a nickname for Bucharest, which is Little Paris, because of how beautiful it is. It's a lively European metropolis where people from all over the world meet tourists and business people and you have many many possibilities for a pleasurable and relaxing stay there. Alright, it tells you how much a car is if you'd like to rent one with or without a driver. Where to go on a day trip with prices in US dollars, I think. I don't know why it says USS, but there might just be um, an issue with the print. So, a four hour trip around Bucharest would have cost. $18.50 for at least two people, or for a group it would have been $8.50. A city trip by night, where you can visit some bars, would have been $25.50, and a Romanian evening $24. For a weekend at the coast, you would have paid $150, and again, $50. Um, a trip to the Danube Delta, $98, and a, a trip around Romania for 12 days would have been $825. Alright, so we have hotels, restaurants, Romanian specialties, night bar. We have concert halls, opera, circus, cinema, monuments, different kinds of museums, libraries, galleries, 
gardens, parks, and forests. We have sports arenas. We have beaches where you can go swimming. These are places where you can go shopping. Banks, post, telephone, pharmacies, hospitals, and of course, the train station. So have a garden with a lake here, and for the south, we have a river. Presumably run partly underground here in this area. And we have a northern train station here. Um, looks almost French, Gare du Nord. And there should be another train station somewhere if we have a northern one. I can't see one. So maybe here further up towards the edge of the city. We can see there's a rail line here. Part that's been highlighted is marked in red. We can see that here on the side. But again, I feel like this is a map that kind of invites you to really look at the streets and the roads um, and to drive around. It does give you some numbers here on highlights that you might want to visit. I'm sure you can walk on foot here. But I think it's just a, um, an aspect of the time that you would have highlighted individual traffic. So cars. For me, it also looks like you have a number of quite large boulevards like this one here. There's another one that runs across here. Straight through the center. Down here, of course. And these were usually built rather late. Bucharest is an old city too. We know that it traces back at least to the 15th century. But there were a lot of changes to the um, style of the city throughout the centuries. And these large boulevards were usually modeled after Paris, where they were established in the um, 19th century. In fact, what makes Bucharest so beautiful, apparently, are the architecture styles from the early 
20th century and late 19th. It's a lot of Art Nouveau and Art Deco with a very specific uh, Romanian influence. And here too we can see that this looks like um, very modern city planning. These straight lines here, all the way across. Let me know if you've been to Bucharest. I haven't, but now that I've read about it, I'm really curious. video will be again on Wednesday. Until then, I hope you have a good time. Sleep well.